Looking at the atom in a little more detail, I've drawn a picture of an atom. Obviously, atoms are very, very, very small, but we've made it a little bit bigger, a model of the atom, so that we can look at it and pretend that's what it's like. Now, you'll see at the middle, there's a teeny tiny little dot. That's called the nucleus. And actually, the nucleus is a lot smaller than that if this was drawn to scale, like a map. If we drew this atom as big as a football stadium, the nucleus would be about as big as a marble, just sitting in the middle, teeny tiny. Now the rest of the atom, what's that? Well actually, there's pretty much nothing there. There are a few little electrons whizzing around. But if our, football st if our atom was as big as the football stadium, we wouldn't even see the electrons, they'd be so small. They're almost so small that they're not there. In fact, there's a whole set of interesting physics about how they can be considered just an energy wave rather than a particle, a thing. But anyway, they can be both. It's confusing. All right, so we've got electrons whizzing around that are so teeny tiny you can't see them. You've got a nucleus this big, and the atom is as big as a football stadium. What's the rest of the atom? It's nothing. It's empty space. Now we're going to zoom in on that nucleus and see what's inside. So here's our nucleus with the electrons around the outside. We're zooming in to see what's inside the nucleus. Because even though it's that small, it's got stuff in it. We look, it's made of two things. It's got protons and neutrons. Protons are positive. Protons are positive. Neutrons are neutral. That means they're not positive and they're not negative. The electrons are negative. You're going to want to write that down. Protons are positive. Electrons are negative. And neutrons are neutral. They're neither. They're not positive or negative, they're like zero. Oh, let's look again. If we look in this nucleus, you can see we've got six protons and six neutrons. That's actually the number of protons and electrons and neutrons is what makes the atom do what it does. Going back to our Lego bricks, it's the difference between a red brick and a yellow brick. It's how many protons it's got. We use the protons to decide what element it is. If you look at your periodic table, you'll see that every single element has a different atomic number. It's like its ID number. And they get that by looking at the number of protons. So in our atom, we've got six protons, right? That means our atomic number is six, which means we've got a carbon atom. Because if you look at your periodic table, number six is carbon. Now then the number of electrons in a neutral atom, and I'll explain more about that soon because we'll look at some atoms that are not neutral. In just a plain atom, the number of electrons, the negatives, is the same as the number of protons, the pluses. You've got pluses, minuses. If everything's neutral in an atom, they've got to be the same. So we know we've got six protons, six electrons. Now remember I told you the mass, no sorry, the mass of the electrons is tiny. They're so small you wouldn't be able to see them. So the mass is all in the nucleus, it's all this stuff, the protons and neutrons. And they're about the same size. So if you say we've got six protons and six neutrons, you add up the six and the six, you get the mass. The mass is 12. If you look at your periodic table, you'll see that the mass isn't 12, it's 12.011, I think. Yes, 12.011 you'll learn about that later too. But the mass number of an atom is 12. Of, of carbon is 12 because it's got six protons and six neutrons.
Now, throughout this class, I'm going to say, I told you this, but it's not quite that simple. It's not quite that simple. And later on, I'm going to tell you it's not quite this simple. But don't worry. A guy called Niels Bohr came up with a new way to look at atoms. Instead of just electrons flying around at random, he said they go in nice circles. And he called those circles energy levels. Some people call them shells or orbitals. I like energy levels best because this, energy, this electron here in the first energy level has less energy than this one. It's not as excited. Now, they keep building these electron, these energy levels. You can have seven in total. We're only going to worry about the first three. The first one can only fit two electrons in it. Remember, that's the lowest energy level. They're the most relaxed there. The electrons like to be there, but only two can fit. We're going to look at boron. It's got five protons and five electrons. Now, all five electrons would like to be in the first energy level because it's the most relaxed. But only two can fit. One, two. Then it's full. No more room. So they do the next best thing. They go in the second energy level. You can fit eight in there. Now, boron has five. So one, two. That leaves three. Four, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Two in the first, three in the next. And that's going to be important coming up because it's how many electrons are in that outside energy level or energy shell. That's what controls what chemical reactions each atom has. So let's do a couple of practice ones. Here's sulfur. If you look on the periodic table, you'll see that sulfur has an atomic number of 16. That means it's got 16 protons and 16 electrons. We can start putting them in its energy levels. Now, they all want to go in the first one, but only fits two. One, two. Then it's full. So after that, three, four, this one holds eight, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Look, it's full. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's full. So we go to the next one. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. You see how I filled them all in first? That was just to make it pretty. But I did one, and then I went back and put the second one in. Because electrons prefer to be by themselves, but they hang out in pairs. Potassium. Let's look at potassium. Potassium's got, and sorry, I'm looking at my periodic table. I can't see it. 19. It's got 19 protons and 19 electrons. So we put two in the first one. See, so it's got the plus 19 in the middle. That was supposed to remind me. One, two, then it's full. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now it's full. Next one. Eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, now it's full, 19, 